Okay, talking one, two. Hey, everybody. We're broadcasting live. We are five minutes before official start time. There's Gwen. Uh, Gwenny, I don't see your camera. I don't know if you see my camera. You really get it. I was like, I can hear you. I'm not going to put you on uh, till we actually go live because um, the speakers here have a little bit of feedback. So we'll just have a little bit iffy sound and, until that point. So are you guys good over there? And um, your sound is breaking up for me. Uh, it's very iffy. So you might might want to put her kind of in a quiet corner so that um, the noise canceling stuff is halfway decent. You know what I mean? There's a lot of background noise. Or just have her speak close to the screen. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me okay right now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I've got a lot of noise too, so. You're on the big screen, so. <laughs> I think we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So I'm going to just close this. There's no reason to keep it open because I'm going to be playing the presentation and uh, we're running the live stream from a separate laptop and camera. Yeah, I'll open it after each person's presentation. So we'll have to be ready to get that going. Yep, and now I can see the room. Hey, folks. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Ask Jody again. I think it's zero nine one one, but I keep saying it wrong. So everybody that's uh, we need to record the broadcast on Sky on um, UStream.
Um, what do you think, Shane? Shall we start? <laughs> he is monitoring sound. Shall we start? Yes, he says. Okay, great. Hello. <coughs> One of those days. Aloha, everybody. And thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Roxanne Darling. Uh, tonight's topic is social media and tourism. And uh, we've got a lot of technology going on, so let me just fill you in on what all is happening tonight. Uh, so we are having five of the six uh, presenters are going to be here on Maui tonight in the room with us. And we are live streaming this, courtesy of that laptop and camera back there, to the world. We've got about, I don't know, last check, Tara, 25, 30 people that actually pre-registered. It's open, so there's a lot more people watching that did not pre-register. And then we have a, a satellite event happening on Oahu, which is where our sixth speaker is going to be. So we're going to Skype her in uh, when it's her turn. And the way that we have structured tonight is to just do some brainstorming with uh, ideas in social media and tourism. So we've got a wide range of topics, and uh, each speaker has five minutes to present their idea. And then we're going to take about a five minute time slot to talk about each idea. So we're going to Skype with. Uh, Oahu for that. So we're going to be jumping back and forth a little bit on my laptop uh, over here to, uh, and hopefully everyone will keep up with each other. We'll see how it goes. Um, but Social Media Club, let me give you a brief, actually Tara's going to give us a little brief introduction of that. Tara Cummins is our Social Media Club president this year. She flew over today from Oahu uh, to be with us and I'm going to let you give us the, give us the spiel About on Social, Social Media, Media Club. Club. Well, I don't. I feel kind of silly giving this the spiel about Social Media Club after you. Roxanne Darling was our founder in 2008, and we are um, a really unique club. We are one of the fastest growing uh, clubs in the world, and in addition to that, we're the only club that has the challenge of having um, members on multiple islands. So because of that, we've had the chance to do some things that other clubs are really intrigued about and, and live streaming and having these satellite events is definitely one of them. So pat yourselves on the back for participating in that. Yeah. And so um, we're, in, we're continuing to grow. We're continuing to do our outreach on all the islands. We do have uh, members on all the islands except for Lanai and Molokai. So um, keep it up, and thank you for your energy, and thank you for coming. This, is a, this was a first time for us to hold uh, the event live on a neighbor island and live stream it to Oahu. And so this is uh, pretty, kind of exciting for us. So thank you for supporting us in this endeavor, and let's have fun tonight. Yeah. So 
I might just add one thing. Um, Social Media Club is a nonprofit. It's a global nonprofit, and there are over 100 chapters worldwide. So we are just one of those chapters, but right now we're the number one chapter in the world based on um, our membership. So it's very cool when Hawaii can be at the head of the class. So we really like that. I'm going to switch presentations now, and we are going to start up the evening's events. I'd like to start by thanking Chris Comst. This is his photograph uh, that we are I crowdsourced. Um, the title of the photograph, We Are All Connected in This World, and I thought it was a really good photo, isn't it, um, to be able to give that message that we're all connected. So um, Hawaii, and there's my, that's our Oahu. You know, <laughs> okay, speakers are now straight jacketed and to be continued. Um, it's great. So that's what social media is. It's feedback from the community and tourism has been on the shoulders of a select few uh, government employees and ad and PR people for most of the life of uh, Hawaii. But now with social media, the members of the community uh, the bloggers, the podcasters, the people who tweet and Facebook, we all have a stake in getting the tourism messages out. And especially for those of you that own a small business, you have great opportunities to use social media to get the word out directly to visitors uh, as well as locals. And that's what we're here tonight to just figure out how can we really open up the creativity, brainstorming wise. Uh, somebody's phone is ringing. And so we're going to get started. Um, so this is our crew for tonight. Uh, Tara, Lisa is here. Lisa, raise your hand. She's coming up. Uh, actually, you know, let's just skip over that because everybody's going to be up here in a second. So um, we've been we've seeded the topic with a few ideas. You've seen these on Twitter. Uh, we've got a hashtag for each idea that's coming out tonight. If you like that idea, please retweet it or add your comments uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, these are just a few. We've got the uh, presentation that's online. If you go to our website and click on this event tonight, we've already got the PDF loaded so you can download the entire presentation. Uh, so you can sit back, enjoy the show, and uh, not worry about taking notes. So first up, Tara Kumins. Okay. Am I, do I need to hit this? Do I need to move it forward? You can or just, just click that. Do I need to hit this? You need to hit that. <laughs> please stay, and please stay still. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, my idea is the idea of um, engaging families just a little bit more into the history of um, Hawaii. I was inspired by this postcard from my nephew who gratefully gets to visit me once a year. And this last summer they almost didn't come and instead they went to San Francisco. And Will said, uh, Dear Aunt Tara and Uncle Jeff and Rudy, that's our dog, I'd rather visit Hawaii than San Francisco. I wish I could not see you guys and Rudy this summer. Love the Coomans. Um, so my idea was that you know kids come here a lot and they kind of have their own ideas about what Hawaii is all about. But what I'd love Hawaii to do is integrate some of the storytelling history that we have in our um, in our culture. And the way to do that is, of course, to invite different aspects of Hawaii to participate, different pe personalities uh, to participate in this process, recording video and telling their story about Hawaii. It could be any level of, it could be about the food, it could be about lay making, it could be, I mean, pick your topic, we have so much to share. But I want the kids to be able to see that and I also thought it would be very cool for HVCB to incorporate that into the road tours that they have, that they're already giving. And then reach out through kids' organizations, could be Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Mommy Bloggers, and invite the kids to submit a, uh, presentation of what they learned about Hawaii. Now presentation being a drawing, it could be a video, it could be a song they made. I really think less th that the content is, is it, the, the media is less important and the, and the idea that they have an opportunity to interact with a a, their own art form, whatever they're most comfortable with, and create a Hawaii for themselves. I think that the artwork would be, make a great ad campaign over time 
And I think that it would be fantastic if the winning family, if a winner was chosen and the winning family also did a postcard every day from Hawaii while they were here. I think it's less important what island they're on and more important that they come and they enjoy it and they share that experience. So that's my kind of idea in a nutshell. Oh, I also, yes, thank you. I also had a Pinterest board. I created a sample Pinterest board if anybody wants to go to it. Just as an example, I just did a quick search for kids' drawings in Hawaii. Um, actually, it was harder to find than you'd imagine, which really gives me hope that this is actually an idea that could work because um, kids have such imagination. We actually have many pictures that look like this on our own bulletin board at home, but um, they're just not there yet, and, and they're not online. So this is an opportunity for us to let kids tell our stories while giving those kids a view into the story that the stories that make Hawaii unique. So that's my that's my pitch. That's my idea. I'd love to hear any add-ons that anybody has to any of that. So thank okay. you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to exit out of here for a second, and I'm going to go over to Skype, um, and we're going to see if this will work because the folks on Oahu want to be able to share their comments. Uh, but meanwhile, start talking, and if anybody has anything they want to share, you're welcome to come up here to the podium. And if this doesn't work so great on this first run, we might, uh, I might. Maybe if I mute this. Can we you see you guys. Oops, somebody just got muted. <laughs> can you hear us now? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Can you hear us? You, you know what I'm thinking? Uh-huh. I'm thinking that this is going to be maybe a little awkward switching back and forth. And so uh, feel free to object in the audience. But I think what I'm going to do is let us give all the ideas first, and then we'll open it up for conversation later. What do you think? I, I, I agree. I, I think that. What do you guys think? Yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. OK. It feels a little. It feels a little bit easier. So uh, we're in agreement over here. Are you guys in agreement over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. We we see you guys. So we we see that you're just staring at us. So. <laughs> oh, there's a wave. We we are saying yes. I think there's about a 10 second delay. Oh, that's probably true. That's probably true. Okay. Well, I'm going to shut this down. We're going to um, pick up with our next speaker and uh, we'll rock and roll. Are you ready, Lisa? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Okie dokie. Lisa Pierce. Lisa has a MauiBlog.com. She's Maui's most popular blogger. She's been blogging for many, many years and uh, has done so much for Hawaii tourism. Seriously, so much. Uh, you're really our unsung hero, I think. And uh, so I, I love that we're all getting in the mix of the conversation. So come on over, Lisa. Hello. Thank you for that sweet introduction. Now I'm kind of humbled. <laughs> but it's exciting. I started a Maui blog as Just Talk Story online, and it grew into promoting tourism. So that's very exciting. And uh, my what if idea is what if the tourism industry and the businesses on Hawaii will use locals to promote their businesses on social media and use them as a catalyst. And so you will see there's a word there, catalyst. I first discovered um, the word catalyst when I was in high school. I was in a science high school. And um, I really like that term because it represents something that steers up whatever it is that it's put in and it stimulates activity, it creates reaction. And so that's why I use that as an idea. Not just you know use local bloggers, but actually use them as a catalyst. Notice that the catalyst is not focused on itself, but the function is to really get the others do something that needed to be done in order to come up with a reaction. So um, that's the catalyst. And then um, I was thinking, so um, 
some people might be thinking, okay, we know that already, the catalyst, but why use locals? Why not use, you know, the international bloggers or mainland bloggers or social media people? And I think all of us already know that, you know, the social, um, the tourism industry already know the importance of um, social media. But uh, in, in fact, they already hired or they already invited local uh, mainland bloggers and mainland um, social media participants. And I'm all for that. I really, really enjoy, I really, really like that they do that because you get different um, kind of reaction or different point of view from other people. However, and don't you just like those, however, <laughs> I hate that when my, my daughter said, however. <laughs> it's nicer than but. Yeah, the ho yeah, exactly. The however is I think um, we should utilize our resources here too, our local resources. And I apologize to the, um, the Hawaii, the Oahu, and other islands because I use Maui local, actually. I should be there. Maui locals are social media category. I use Maui, but actually it can apply to Oahu, to Kauai, to Big Island, as um, Big Island locals as social media catalyst. And the ideas, let's see. This is the idea. I want to give specific idea. And I chose um, the Kihei Fort Friday just to give us a specific kind of role or a specific uh, concrete example on how we can apply this instead of just general one. So Kihei Fort Friday is coming up soon, right? Or in December, and they're in the middle of planning. And as far as I know, usually the town parties don't give budget to social media, because it's expected that we do so social media for free, right? Just do it free. The problem with free is that it cannot be consistent. So we want it consistent, we want it regular. And so this is the idea is to select, or actually I have it here, keep on looking there, select a team of five social media influencers from Maui, and so um, it will have a team of five, so that will compose five months of the Kihei Town Party. Each month, there will be a lead catalyst, and then there will be four support. So the lead catalyst is required to attend the town party. And he'll be there, you know, doing Instagram, taking pictures. He'll also be responsible for blogging before and after. And then the support catalyst are there to retweet, to kind of enhance, you know, what she's saying, to share in Facebook, you know, like the Instagram. So there's activity. So you can see what the catalysts are doing now. And not only that, so we don't want it focused on that group alone. But see, when the people outside that group see the activities that's going on, they are more likely to get involved. They're more likely to share it too. Everyone's sharing about it. Let's share it too. Everyone's Instagramming there. Let's take picture and Instagram this event. And that's just one, one that's the first, let's say that's just the first week or the first month, right? And then the second month, month it will build up. So people saw all the tweeting, all the fun that happened on the first month. They would want to come. So now you build up the participation just from the buzz that was created from the first town party. So, and that's the idea. And so we want it really clear that there's five so that there's always support. Because what's happening is, you know, if only one social media person is in charge, and you know, they'll try to do the Facebook and everything. But when there's no participation initially, you know, people are not likely to participate. They kind of just get ignored and see where the other buzz are happening, right? And so that's the main idea. Let's see here. So the support catalyst will just do the hashtag. The hashtag will be used more. There will be more uh, Instagram pictures. And so we're suggesting a stipend of $100 for the main blogger or the main social media person, and then the supporters will get $50. So let's see, what $300 for a month, and that's spread over five months. And that's not real expensive if you consider how big 
the event is, the magnitude of the event, and how you know they, can, they will be writing grants, they will be asking for support from the public. So that's not really a lot of budget for you know, social media, but the effect is a lot. And remember, too, there's an important aspect of this suggestion is that there is consistency. It's like um, in a bank, what's that, compounded interest or something? You know, you know there, I've seen other events that they invited us one time, and there was a big buzz, everything. And so the engagement on Facebook goes up, right? And that's exciting. However, here am I again with my however, <laughs> If it's only one time, it goes up, and then the engagement slowly goes down. There's no consistency, there's no building up. What we want is building up. So the five, you know, it starts slow, it goes up, goes up, maybe it goes down a little bit, but you will see the graph always going up. And eventually, you know, if you don't want to pay anymore, <laughs> the public will already pick it up, and you will have free, you know, social media participation. But you gotta start somewhere wherein there are catalysts around it. And I suggest local just because it's, you know, inexpensive. Mm -hmm. They're here, they're talented, they're um, available, there's less logistics to think about. So now we have Aloha festivals that are going on. You know, I always look for, okay, what are being tweeted and what's going on, what's the buzz? There's really not much. I mean, there are some. But imagine if there's a group of local that's really assigned to do it, I think there's gonna be more buzz. And the good thing is, it's not gonna be limited to local. You know, I was going back to why local, I think locals are looked at as authority on the places that they're at. And that's, <laughs> and that's my experience, that's why I'm sharing this. I get emails of people asking, where do locals like to eat? What do locals like to do? Where shall we take our pictures that are not so common? Why do you think this one book, that I'm not gonna mention what it is, because I don't wanna promote, but there's one book that's very popular right now, because it tells where the secret things, you know, secret uh, places on Maui is. Because tourists wants to know about, you know, local, local things that are going on, even the events, going back to Kihei for Friday. When Wailuku first Friday started, I volunteered. Um, I volunteered in promoting it, and it's really very fulfilling. When we got this, Yuki um, emailed me, and she said, it works, it works, social media works. Look at this, and look at that. Um, you know, a friend, visitors from Germany, they said they checked in, they went, they logged in the internet, they checked my blog, what's going on, they saw it's Kihei first, uh, Wailuku, Friday, first Friday, they went there, they had a blast. And she, he even blogged about it. And what impact is that? That's a great impact. He's got a lot of followers. So it's really good. And you know, it's, it's actually going to be good if it's regular. But like what I said, even just in the beginning, it will be a big impact in the event that's starting. And so other benefits of this, SEO. Remember, five bloggers are gonna be doing their blogs so that it can be linked back to their website. Or if they want the bloggers to blog on their website, that's good too, that con that's uh, content on the website that they're gonna have. Social media buzz guaranteed, like what I said. Because for me, example is, you know, I love writing about Maui. You know, that's how I started, right? And then when the uh, Maui blog became famous, you know, I get a lot of requests. Can you, you know, talk about this? Can you talk about it? So, oh, sure, sure, sure. Finally, I was like overwhelmed. I can do it all. <laughs> you know, I, I can blog it all. My family won't see me anymore. You know, and events. I love going to events, but I want to spend time with my family. You know, so there's a balance. So what happens, I prioritize. You know, there are events that I want to go to and I really, really want to go to, but my family don't want to go to, it's not going to be a priority. There are events that I want to go to, but we don't have budget to go, we're not going to go. However, if they said, oh, we'll give you a stipend, you know, and I can bring my family and feed them there, feed them in the food truck, I have the budget to, you know. So it's just another advantage of using local is stimulating the local economy. You know, it's, it's 
spending the money here and letting it go around. Again, I'm not against, you know, mainland bloggers and international. A lot of them are my friends, and I really think it's very effective too. What I'm saying is there's got to be a combination. And right now, I have to be honest, I don't see, you know, a combination a lot. So the more they have that, you know, the tourism authority as well as the businesses on Maui, you know, I think it will benefit not just Maui, <laughs> Hawaii. It will benefit Hawaii community a lot. So let's see here. It will build the fans. I think that should, your time is almost up. So okay, that's okay, Oh, there we go. There you go. The, this, I, I used the example of um, Kihei Town Party, right? But actually, this can be applied to anything. A hotel that's starting, just use five, you know, uh, make a five um, man group or, you know, um, a group of catalysts. It can be even an ongoing business already. You know, you already started, it's been going on, but you heard about the social media buzz. Why not form five group of people that will do the buzz? But the, the important thing is, you know, it has to be consistent. It has to be over time, compounding interest. These are the ideas that are in here. The catalyst, the person that you're choosing has to have that character of kind of a catalyst. <laughs> Motivating others to do it. It's not about me, it's about other engaging other people. And not just engagement, conversing back and forth with each other, but also motivating them, encouraging them to share it with others and others to share with others and others and others. And that's how we'll grow. Thank you. <laughs> So with a lot of these ideas, uh, it's the pitch, isn't it? <laughs> You've got a good pitch, Lisa. Okay, next is Chris Norberg. Chris runs uh, Hawaii Web Group, which is a web developer, and I also really, um, you're, you know, you're behind the scenes. You're not the face of your company, but mm -hmm. how many fans do you have on your Facebook page? Uh, like 196,000. 196,000. So uh, for Maui, so destination related assets doing it. Yeah. Everybody loves you. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank take you. it okay. away, Chris. Cool. Um, also a professional member of Social Media Club. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so first off, um, my amazing idea was actually blatantly stolen from Eric Blair. Um, and if he wasn't social media, yeah. And if he wasn't here today, I would almost certainly consider giving you credit. Um, but uh, basically, before I go to the slides, um, I find that there's a major problem with social media, and in my experience, uh, Maui's local uh, businesses use excuses like not having enough time, um, not having the interest or understanding, and not being able to see an obvious ROI when they're dealing with so social media for their business. Um, but the thing is that they don't realize is they, they do have this. They have, and most of them have employees that for 10, 15 minutes of the day at least are sitting on their hands, you know, and have the time to be able to do something to help. Um, and it, everybody has time if you're coached correctly. Um, and a high ROI is, definitely possible if it's done correctly. Um, so you know, there's definitely, it's a learning curve and that's another problem. Um, the way I see it possibly being answered is incentivizing local businesses to participate regularly in the social media community via collaborative projects to where um, basically you don't need as much time because you have a lot of people involved where you just, everyone has a little piece of the puzzle. Um, and so that it doesn't take a lot of time for each person. Um, make it a fun project so there's more interest in it. And then having actual foot traffic come into your business um, is an easy way to measure exactly how much ROI you're getting out of it. Um, so with the Maui scavenger hunt, um, this accomplishes the two major objectives, which is getting our visitors to use social media more when on Maui, um, which helps everybody. Um, get local businesses involved and excited and taking advantage of an easy opportunity to interact uh, with their customers using social media. So, um, uh, yeah, so basically um, 10 to 20 non-competing businesses can join a quarterly campaign, um, which could be both for tourists and locals, and um, just a low-cost participation fee to help 
pay for the grand prize. Um, and it could be up to a lot more than 10 to 20. These are all just brainstorming. Um, and then invite uh, visitors to use the check-in features through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Foursquare, and whatever else will allow you to do that using a specific hashtag. Um, and they have to use that in order to get freebies and, and, um, and discounts at each business. They're able to, um, to just show their phone or whatever and be able to do it that way so that at least the businesses know it's working. Um, visitors would seek out the special offers and some would go for the full win. So basically that's a win-win. You know, Some people aren't going to be interested in actually winning. They're just going to want to take advantage of a couple of discounts here and there. It'll be another way of promoting that. Um, and then there's some people who just go nuts and try and do the whole thing. And if there's 30, 40 businesses, it might be actually kind of difficult. But um, at the same time, they could make their trip amazing or very hectic. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, let's see here. Um, participating businesses will see increased traffic and agree to help promoting the contest the month prior and during. Um, this will require minimal work since each business will be doing a little bit of promo, um, which helps everybody. It's almost like um, a sponsored event. And, you know, where there's 10 sponsors, 10, 20 sponsors. They're all getting a little bit of love and they're all putting a little promotion into it. Um, and the fee would be used to secure a grand prize, maybe a trip to Hawaii, or for locals, a trip to Vegas. Um, I think Vegas already has something similar to this. They have a couple tours and stuff like that going on, so that may be another way to cross-promote um, with those businesses. Um, let's see. Maybe potentially a separate hunt for visitors and one for residents. And um, whoever group will coordinate, maybe. This is in the brainstorm. I don't know. I, I took the, the URL because I'm domain happy. Um, but, uh, and, I, and I put something up. But, uh, but basically, this, this is open to anybody, and it's just kind of another concept. So. You've got I have two more slides. Oh. Um, oh, this is what's on the website. I just put up some, some thoughts, really, um, basically explaining what I just said. This is like the business portion at the bottom of the page, and then the top part of the page is this, and I, I was figuring a good way to, to start um, the enthusiasm over this project would be to use the Facebook page because it's just so powerful, um, and use that to get people fired up on it and to announce it, and um, that's it, pretty much. Got one more slide. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. That's it. So, uh, Eric Blair likes that idea. Yeah. Very good, very good. Um, we're going to skip over Laura. Laura is on Oahu. We're going to um, do uh, Laura last uh, so that we can get that Skype all at once. So, that means we're jumping ahead to Komai, Princess Komai. And I, I should have really be announcing the hashtags ahead of each idea. SM Workforce is the uh, hashtag I've blessed you with. So, okay. Rocky. Aloha everyone, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about building a strong social media workforce. And this idea kind of piggybacks on a lot of people that are talking about education today. And I'm really, really excited about that because in my experience uh, in ag working in agriculture, um, there are a lot of gaps between social media in our community both locally and globally, and generationally, culturally. And I feel like if we were able to start our kids a little earlier, we probably could guide them to, or mold them to be what we wanted them to be. And especially with the rise of social media, I think it's, we're in a delusion if we think that it's not uh, going to be a part of their lives. It's, it's the way that our communities learn. It's how people are looking for deals on travel. It's how we find news. And especially for uh, a mixed, I feel like it's a mixed generation, but a lot of, um, I think certainly people that are of my generation and younger, I mean, they don't really read the newspaper. You know, they just go to CNN or New York Times and, you know, um, everyone, I feel like a lot of people are accustomed now to wanting to know if you have a Twitter handle, wanting to know what the hashtag is. And I, I feel like we would be ahead of the game if we were teaching our children how to be prepared for that too. So I just had some ideas um, that I thought would be kind of cool. 
uh, especially in my experience with working in the high schools and the elementary schools and in, in the colleges. Um, and I think it would be uh, my what if is uh, that students, particularly in high school, I think it's a good place for them to start because that's when they're already sort of getting into social media um, and building strong, uh, creating curriculum that's obviously approved by their teachers and their principal um, to integrate social media into their lesson plans. Um, and this would be a way to share school information um, with their schoolmates and their community. Everybody's kids go to school. Well, most of them, or their kids should be going to school. <laughs> okay, so, and you know, almost every kid in high school has a cell phone. Almost every kid in high school has a Facebook. So this would be a great opportunity to show them also uh, some social media etiquette early. I feel like social media becomes a, a fear, a fear for a lot of people because no one's guiding them. No one is guiding our children on how to use social media and that is really, really scary. And if you go on there, it's like the wild, wild west. Like you can find anything and post anything and I think if we gave them better direction instead of ignoring that this is something that we're all using, then we would have, um, I don't wanna say more control, but have a stronger influence on what direction they're gonna take their lives with social media. Uh, it'll also position Hawaii students as progressive and competitive job applicants. Again, delusional if we don't think that this is the way that people are learning. I, um, I don't really like to talk about politics, but uh, particularly with um, this campaign season, I've seen so much social media and that is incredible and me and my mom were talking about how, you know, she was remembering elections when she was young and there was nothing like this. How, you know, one speaker maybe gets 11,000 tweets and then another speaker gets 22,000 tweets. You know, and how, how it is a part of being in a competitive market. So I think that if we were, again, able to guide um, our students in the direction we are pretty much, we pretty much can build them the way that we want, uh, want them to be. And certainly as a business owner, community leader, um, and educational advocate, they, when they come to me as applicants, that does give them the upper, the upper hand that they built ad campaigns and social media campaigns in their schools already, that they're familiar with the systems, that they know things that I don't know. And I feel like if we embrace that again, instead of fearing that, that we're probably um, gonna be able to bring a, uh, build a stronger social media force. Um, and then also readying them for job markets um, that need social media, which is pretty much all of them or should be all of them. I feel like if you're not on social media, if your media does not have some type of social media uh, influence, you need to get on it. And um, I remember a few years ago sitting with uh, some of the people that are in here telling me, if you folks, with my own business, if you folks don't get on it, you're gonna be behind. So. Um, I think it's sort of a no-brainer to go after the kids. Uh, students would use social media networks um, in classes and clubs uh, during and after school. So again, just guiding them to provide their communities with information and then also to promote collaborating with other schools and other businesses, schools globally, like these networks are all global networks so I, and local networks. So I think it's a great opportunity for them to already build global and local alliances. Uh, examples would include, but are not limited to, uh, Instagram contests for art projects, Facebook updates for class and club activities, uh, learning social media etiquette to address the appropriate way to use um, social media, and also to alleviate some of the things that arise due to social media, for example, bullying. So I think, again, like we shouldn't just try to sweep it under the rug when they're going to come into an industry that has it already. Um, replace or support school newspapers uh, with student-managed blogs. So um, I think it would be a great idea even for parents or communities to know what's happening in their schools if their schools were active in social media. Um, and then also invite social media pros as guest speakers because they're obviously going to need to learn. <laughs> uh, each school would have a Twitter handle and each class, will, class would have a hashtag such as at my high school and 
a hashtag at AOHT for the Academy of Hospitality and Tourism. Uh, use Facebook groups for uh, topic related about activities or private groups for each class. Use hashtags for field trips and share photos. Use Pinterest boards to show schools. So I went up and I got, uh, I thought that Stanford did the best out of all the ones that I was searching because they had, um, they had a social media um, handle for all of the networks that I like to go on. So they had a Pinterest, they had a, I don't know, if, sorry, 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 okay. They had uh, an Instagram, they had a Twitter, and it was very active. They're always tweeting, you always know what's going on. They integrate with their community, they're showing collaborations, they're posting pictures about what they're doing, and let me just go back here. Um, one of the ideas that I had was when you register for school, all the kids get a, um, a Twitter handle or a hashtag for their class. So it's everybody has it, all the parents know, at the student, um, at your student conference, um, student teacher conferences, it's something that you talk about. It's something that is integrated into the life of the school and um, I feel as a employer and a community leader that if they were already, if our students were already on board with this, then I would, um, I would certainly consider, consider hiring them. That's it. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you very much. I have to finish my tweet there. Uh, next up is my business partner, Shane Robinson. Uh, he's been uh, secret camera manning the live stream, which he's passing over to Eric now. So uh, uh, Shane is an artist, a programmer, uh, has been building websites since 1995. And uh, we moved to Maui actually because we both want to expand our horizons much more in the creative direction. So um, I kind of arm wrestled him in. To yeah. speaking tonight. <laughs> How do I admit? Uh, just right here. Or the space right. bar. All right. So yeah, I'm much more comfortable behind the camera. Stand still with, and get back oh. <laughs> Testing, testing. Ready, Eric? <laughs> uh, much more comfortable behind the camera filming beach walks or behind the camera over there or at the keyboard. So, but uh, I live with a very persuasive person. So <laughs> we're going to talk for two minutes and 13 seconds, I told her, about uh, promoting artists and the art community on Maui. But what I'd like everyone to do is, whatever your industry is, farms, education, lodging, it, actually this would work for anything. The idea though is to keep the messages short, sweet, and bring them more up to date with what people are used to seeing out on the internet. So, um, oh, I can read it here. So Etsy, if people know what Etsy is, it's a place where people sell handmade goods or goods that they, re they resell or, or refine and, and fix up. But what Etsy does really, really good in addition to building communities is create what they call handmade portraits. And they're short, three, maybe four minute videos that highlight an artist. I don't know how they choose the artist, but they do a very good job of highlighting artists around the world in these little videos. And they have a feel, they have a flavor, they have a style that is unmistakably Etsy so that you know what you're getting. And even if I'm not into knitting or crocheting or whatever it might be, I still subscribe and watch the videos on YouTube or on my big screen and I download them into iTunes. <coughs> so the idea is to do something like that and to get funding or the backing of the different industries on Maui to do something. Well, I did in the next slide then, as it, I don't know if it's going to play or not when yeah, I advance it. Yeah, we have to plug in the um, sound as soon as you're ready for that. It'll probably just come out of this, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try it and see if, yeah, see if you all can hear it. Eric Otherwise, will tell us if you we've can hear got it right here. See, I okay. don't know that they'll be able to hear it, but we'll try. Okay. So this is about three and a half minutes. I edited it down to a minute just to tell the story, but also to help you get a feeling of the style. People think that as soon as you take the trash out, then it just disappears. I have the feeling most people don't think about where it's going. It's the only earth we get. It's like our eyes. We only get this pair, and that's it. I try to live my life 
in such a way where I am working towards the evolution of humanity. In my work, it's important to me to use materials that, that are already here. And to understand, too, the idea that something that had an original function doesn't necessarily have to have that same function. And in a way, you can transcend that function. Um, so you get a sense of the style, and it moves quickly, and rather than just having a talking head, you're moving back and forth between the person that's working. The same thing could happen in school gardens, or lodging, or photography, or um, farms especially, to bring people out of the resorts and into the countryside in Maui. So we grabbed MauiArt.tv because uh, it was available. And, um, of course, the idea would be just basic, the things we've been saying all night. Economic development, buying URLs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We should actually have a registrar here. <laughs> um, make them easy to share, easy to embed, easy to, to spread around, easy to pin, easy to put on Facebook. High quality and develop a style so that it's identifiable, and it's not necessarily just our island, but so that it's identifiable, identifiable and brings it out of the, what people think of when they think of vacation videos and into what we're used to seeing and can captivate our attention in, again, three to four minutes. In addition to securing funding, the idea they could be, because they would be short, could be licensed to United, Hawaiian, the hotels to play on their site and on their TVs. If you've ever sat down and watched those, um, um, I just lost my train of thought, but, um, and an additional line would be co-brand. So um, Maui Art in association with Lowe's, because we buy a lot of our supplies at Lowe's and Home Depot, or the Four Seasons in association with Maui Art, or with MauiFarms.tv, or whatever it might be. Trade shows, and then other businesses could sponsor. Um, in addition, so say a gallery would perhaps want to sponsor three or four of its artists in its stable or um, farms coming together like the, the Beef Council does, or the Beef um, Farms and, and sponsoring that. So uh, the wonderful Roxanne Darling put together a quick mock-up of the site today. I dressed appropriately. <laughs> None of this is real, but sure. it, will send you, it will send you an email. It's will send an email. in the lower right in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Tim Garcia, we got all our Maui artists in there. So the idea is to have some uh, deliverables. When we were producing videos, it was the goal, the idea of about $1,000 per edited minute. And so each of these videos are looking at between three and $4,000 to interview, produce, edit, shoot, and distribute. At the end of a year, if you could do just after several months set up, if you could do uh, between one and two a month, or one and two a year, I'm sorry, one and two a month, uh, that works out to 10 to 18. It's only 30 to 50 grand to get this up and running within the first year. Um, all of that is, I forgot what I was gonna say. It's, um, it's doable, it's measurable. Um, and all this other stuff we know. Mm -hmm. One of the other things I wanted to add is that, that slowly, because this is what I'm interested, there is an increasing number of abstract artists and abstract art being created on Maui. And a lot of people don't know, and even artist friends that I have, don't know that per capita, Maui is one of the largest concentrations of artists in the world, not in the country, in the world. People go to Santa Fe, people go to New York, people go to LA, and to a lesser extent, they go to um, um, the smaller places like Park City and Aspen, and those type of things. But per capita, Maui, you can't swing a, a, a cat um, <laughs> without hitting an artist of some kind. And, uh, but even artists don't know that. And so um, this would be one way, I think, regardless, again, of the industry, to get the word, word out there and have people share it. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you, Shane. Uh, you couldn't see this, Shane, but the artists on the tweet stream are loving the idea. So, <laughs> so 
to be continued. All right, I'm going to go escape out of here, and we are going to, yeah, um, I'm sure we have a lot of comments. <laughs> Let me call them so that we can get Laura's presentation. And if this works, we will, we're tech gods tonight, if this works. <laughs> Now, I'm going to have to put the speakers in, though, so you guys can all hear. Uh, there we go. That sounds pretty good, huh? Yes. Everybody can hear? Give me a little. Yes. Fantastic. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hi. Aloha. Aloha. I'm going to turn it over to you. So I'm going to present to my room and hope that you guys in Maui can follow along, but I want to honor the room here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I want to honor you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess it's, oh, it's here. See, that's where I was getting more of it. Which is crazy. Okay. We're going to just listen to her then. All right, do I need to send, how's the audio? The audio is good. Actually, I'm going to play your slideshow and we'll just listen to you. So uh, don't worry about standing in front of the. I've got your slides up right now. I wasn't sure if this would work, um, having these two apps open at the same time, but so far it's working. Yay. Okay. okay. So, tourism Convos. Yeah, Tourism Convos is my hashtag. So the idea here is you know, the promise of social. Pause this so you know it's hard to be confused because it's delayed. So pay attention to her. Tourism condo, condo, hashtag, okay. So the promise of social media is, is um, we can use these social conversations to create these engaged interactions with our customers. And my idea is really targeted toward in-house marketing teams at tourism destination sites or in-house marketing teams. You know, usually this is like the owner, right? <laughs> or like his daughter. But it's, I'm really looking at the opportunities for um, tourism-based businesses as people are traveling on the island. Now, with these social conversations, how many people here feel like they're the CEO of a company? You know, there's like this phrase, like, we're gonna make a customer the CEO. But, like, when was the last time you felt like you were the CEO of Hawaiian Airlines? You know, or like when you walked into a bank and like you felt like, oh yeah, you know, they're treating me like the, the CEO. They're treating me like I'm really important. Or when you check into your hotel, like did you really feel important? So that's sort of kind of what my premise is about is I'm looking ahead like, okay, this is great. We're, we got a Facebook page, we got a Twitter handle, but what's coming down three to five years from now? Because if you can be there now, when the whole, you know, when everybody starts going in that direction, you'll look like a leader. So, you know, what would happen if you really use these tools to um, engage in people with like the human being they are and show the interest in who they were as people. It's all online. They're going, they're checking into places, they're posting to Facebook. You know, this information is publicly available if you just look at it. So um, a lot of our conversations ties by like corporate departments and you know, you gotta have your tweets approved in advance and all this stuff. It's like, but what would the CEO and the CEO FO kind of think of social media if you really look at the lifetime effect of a customer. It's like if you were a tourism destination site, like say you're a zipline company, right? And, and you really created that impact. And then that group of people went back and told their friends about it. And every time they went to Hawaii, they were ziplining. Like if you could really capture people's hearts, there's a lot of monetary value that if the CEO and the CFO bought into it, but I think it would help the communication departments kind of loosen up a little bit and be effective on social media. So anyone here download an app on the cell phone, on your smartphone? Nobody downloaded an app on your cell phone? Oh, who has smartphones in the room? I see, RJ. So you're kind of used to this idea of um, downloading something and making what you have more useful. So what I use is uh, Bing Maps, and you're not seeing it on that screen yet. I'm hoping that there's a blade. It is playing, right? Okay. So, let's see, maybe she's... You what you're doing is a minute. 
But eventually, the screen will refresh. It unboots. She's not sharing her screen. We get to look at this version of it. They're just looking at a live version of um, Bing Maps that will show tweets that are color coded based on whether they're positive, neutral, or negative for your brand. So that's a screenshot. Jody, can we darken the screen a little bit? It's a little blown out. There's apps that have sold the Bing Maps are useful. This one is called Twitter Key. And the next one is, um, well, two slides down, it's Twitter Maps. And so if you go to Bing Maps, and the third icon on the left, they have like apps that you can download. And they're really unlimited, the potential you can do. So if you're a business, it does not take a lot of time to just look at like, who is tweeting like in your, in your proximity? And what would happen if you could click on one of those tweets and see that someone's tweeting in Japanese? or Spanish, and what would the impact be if you reach Eric's feet in their, in their original language? Like, would they feel informed? And again, you're going to see us soon. Um, you know, there's when people go to Hawaii, it's like trophy hunting. They're going around the island and they're visiting these places, and one third of all four score check-ins are being shared on Facebook and Twitter, right? Which means that they're now persisting and, it's, and, it, and it has this compounding effect. And I'm showing on my screen um, a fellow who went to the big island brew house. And every time he tasted a handcrafted ale, he would tweet about it, okay? How important would he feel? We all know that managers will go around a restaurant, hey, did you enjoy your business tonight? How is everything? How would he feel if the manager said, oh, I see that you're tweeting about your experience here tonight. You know, um, thank you for talking about our, you know, coconut coffee ale. Would he feel important? Would he like feel like a CEO, right? So, you know, what I'm trying to convey is there's a lot of talk about how we use tools but there's very little real application going on, and it's not that hard. It's not that hard. There's a guy tweeting in your restaurant, just go up and acknowledge him. I've had these, I, I in a restaurant tweeting, which I do. I had the chef come out of the kitchen, go, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I follow you on Twitter, and I'm glad to meet you in person. I felt like the CEO, right? And it only took a couple of minutes, and it was free. So I've had this happen, I know Tara's had this happen, Derek's probably had this happen, and it's, and it's powerful. And so this, this is what I'm saying is, I see the opportunity here, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time, um, like Homai was saying, you know, um, this is something like that upcoming generation can fill in for you. Um, for hotels, you can do these dynamic maps embedded on the website, you have a convention, you can show in real time where attendees are hanging out, where the hot spots to go for dinner are. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity to um, use this data that's out there. Don't be limited to what's inside Facebook or what's inside Twitter. Realize that there's apps that can extrapolate this. You can put it into your customer relationship management system. Social should affect every department of the organization from sales, not just sales. Well, I mean, sales is a big part of it in marketing, but kind of think of it from like product development or engineering, um, you know, kind of taking this holistic view. So kind of my premise is, you know, um, build these social streams into the entire business, bring it into a dashboard, link it to your customer relationship management, have all these conversations integrated. I think the technology is there that makes it really possible now to do that. And um, I think when you unlock it, that's where the power is. So that's tourism convos, hashtag, follow me at Al Kinoshita. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ooh, we're still on that call. There, of course we will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's see. Why won't this get big?
bigger. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is a very awkward thing. We're going to try and have a conversation between two islands. Um, so for people to hear you, if you could come up here to the microphone. But we'd love some feedback from those of you that have businesses, those of you that are social media users, those of you that are new. If you want to come give a uh, I vote for idea number two or number six or whatever you want to talk about. Um, I know, Tara, you said a few people had questions. Yeah. I can either repeat them back or you all, if you want your 30 seconds of fame, you may come up to the microphone and to the camera here. Yeah. Do I get questions? Sure. So, Lori Ruff. Lori Ruff. Known as the LinkedIn Diva, is very interested in hearing from the members, the audience themselves tonight, how, um, what their start, how, what their starting to think about how they can implement these ideas. Because I think it's a great kickoff if somebody here wants to talk about you know, I saw some conversation going on, my hamster wheel is spinning. I know that some of you are inspired, so take a bit of this and, and say what it is that you would like or how you were inspired by some of these things. Okay, so for the live stream, um, at Lori Ruff, who is just in town visiting us uh, here in Hawaii from for the social media conference last week on Oahu, she wants to know what, what, what do you guys, what do you locals think about the ideas? Uh, which ones might you want to implement? Why, how, when? <laughs> Come on up. You want to you want to kick start it? We, so for the live stream people to hear you, you have to be up here by this little microphone. Or uh, if Shane doesn't mind, I'll walk around. Uh, it's going to make a bunch of noise here for a second. Do I have to? Is it, yeah, there we go. Watch the muscle. Okay. Who has an idea? Convers comment. Yeah. I like, I like what I read on the. Uh, information earlier about putting up a hashtag at the airport so the visitors when they get off the plane automatically could tweet very easily mm -hmm. and, and it would remind them mm -hmm. very good yeah I love that idea of a TV screen <laughs> conversations going who else what do we got here I really like the idea of um, Lisa's here and I was thinking uh, it wouldn't be a great idea to have... Uh, that's really annoying. Oh. <laughs> um, I hate the sound of my voice. Uh, yeah, why not have... Um, maybe the, the catalyst is chosen by whoever is the most influential and um, active the month before for whatever event it was. So that makes it more competitive and more exciting for people to, to get involved and maybe get that $100 to go to the next thing. I don't know. Just an idea. Yeah. Oh, so you mean um, keep it on public and then whoever is the most active will it be the next. Yeah. still be in charge yeah. of who you pick, you know. Yeah, but, but, I mean, but instead of a team, it's different. Yeah, you plan yeah, maybe a the month first ahead. Time yeah. A team and then the next time you, you find out who is being the most influential and, and mm -hmm. caring at the most out there who's actually at the event maybe yeah. even, I don't know. I mean, That's a great idea. It just... Yeah, so it's more ex exciting for people. Yeah. It's a surprise. Yeah, like, oh, I get to go to the next thing and get uh -huh. $100 to buy the food and drinks and whatever and do the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah. Or we can we can divide or add. I mean, the only thing is the, the other catalyst should be working with the first. But it can all be worked out. I think that's a great idea. Inspire. And like what, you know, that's another catalyst that's working for the public to get involved you know it's not just the five and that's the whole idea of um, so that pitch see what the hell the sound is doing here is this still on should it be still on yep um okay so they they're having a mm -hmm. little trouble hearing us but this should still be working but uh who else has a comment yes well, I met, Roxanne, I met Roxanne and Shane at Maui Open Studios two years ago, and that was an amazing, amazing event. So I think what Shane is saying about Maui Art TV, um, there are tons of artists here. And even where I live, up country, I mean, every other person is like doing jewelry design or painting or whatever. So I think there is a strong um, uh, market for that and potential for that. So just wanted to add that. Would all the Maui artists that are in the house raise their hands or stand up so we can acknowledge you? Yeah, look around. We got a lot of artists here. It's great. It's great. Uh, who else has a comment? 
I'm just waiting for them to um, have questions over on Oahu. Comments? Yeah, Tara? I just want to share this conversation that you had with Bill Quisinghe. Okay. So Bill Quisinghe said, um, Princess Pamayan at Sheen, could you have high school students work on videos for M Maui Art TV? We're, we're working with YNI Sea Rider Productions. And um, they said that he said, he went on to say that they're, they're doing two short minute videos and silk screen graphics. So what a cool way to combine those two ideas um, and give the kids a, a voice and a, and a real practical way of using that. So thank you for Bill. Bill. Yeah. So for those of you that may not know that, the YNI Sea Riders are a group of high schoolers on the west side of Oahu, and they've been making videos for several years now. They got started on a technology program, and they do awesome work, really professional quality work, and a lot of people hire them, and it's now also turned into a bit of an economic development opportunity for them. So uh, I know that we've got a lot of equipment at Baldwin High School. Uh, there's some equipment here maybe that's available. So we have a lot of the ingredients uh, ready and available to just get this stuff started. So what are they? I guess we're just getting smiles. Okay, who else has a comment? It's kind of awkward, isn't it? I think maybe what we should do is, um, let me see what, Derek, I'm going to see what you guys have going on over there, but I think people will be more comfortable if we just kind of uh, chill out a little bit and sever our ties and let you guys talk. <laughs> and let us talk, uh, but we'd love to hear from some folks on Oahu, so I'm going to unmute my uh, sound so we can hear what you guys are saying over there. No comments. <laughs> What's up, guys? We want to hear from you. Okay, like the idea. Good one. Who, who wants to be on the, the airport social media team? Terry? <laughs> Okay, so um, shall, shall we say goodbye then? And uh, I think we can probably close off the live stream as well and let everybody have their own conversations. The conversation will still be happening, of course, on Twitter. Oh, hi, Gwen. Hi. Gwen is also on our uh, social media club board. Did you have a comment to add? I don't think so. We're, we're, we're kind of just mulling it over over here. I think everybody's just blown away. Must be. <laughs> okay, great. Well, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on Oahu, and thank you all of you that joined us around the world. We had people from that had registered from the Minnesota Department of Tourism and, and heaven knows where all else. So really popular topic. Uh, tourism, to me, is one of the most, I'm getting my chicken skin moment, it's one of the most fun places to play with social media because, I mean, it's about vacations and it's about this beautiful destination that we have. And social media is about making new friends and sharing insider information and helping each other out. It's just like all the ingredients come together um, really almost effortlessly once we just put our minds toward it and get focused in that direction and paddle together. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us and thank you guys on Oahu. <laughs> See ya. We did it. We did it. What I'll do is, um, where's our other presentation? Did I close it already? I'll, I'll just let our, our um, default presentation play in the background. And that way, we'll have something on the screen. And we can turn off the live stream. Did you already shut it down? Uh, bye, live stream. Turn around, everyone, and say goodbye to the internets. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> can we get the shaka? Yeah, shaka. <laughs>